Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk about Mana Rocks. And Mana Rocks is an indie card game that came out recently that caught my attention mainly because it had several really interesting and unique features, and it just kind of intrigued me. And so the first and the biggest one to me was it was calling itself a seasonal card game. And so, you know, in it there's seasons and the battle pass, just like a lot of games nowadays. But the thing is, is every season the entire set of cards change so every season everyone starts with kind of the same basic cards and then you unlock the rest by playing uh, and so it's a little less pay to win than other card games and that in itself seemed super interesting because you know it was kind of doing something like a lot of the auto chess games like TFT do uh, where every season the game is just completely different and so I thought that'd be pretty cool uh, and then the next biggest thing was the game is actually a 2v2 I think in some of the modes there's a 1v1 but the main game mode is advertised as being 2v2 and so that was also really really interesting and if you've watched my channel and you know watched some of my videos for a while you know I absolutely love card games so I had to give it a shot because all these features just I mean it seemed really really cool the issue though with this game is although there are all of these awesome and cool features, the mechanics and the execution of the game kind of are just mediocre at best. And the game kind of plays like a combination of MTG and Hearthstone. Uh, mana has color like an MTG, but uh, something that's kind of interesting is your previously generated mana. Uh, it can actually like change color depending on if you're trying to play spells that are different colors than your heroes. Uh, the attacking kind of works like Hearthstone, except there's like a front line and back line mechanic uh, where if you attack with your creatures, they then go to the back line and they can't, uh, you know, block. So if you are attacking an enemy, you actually have to kill all of their, you know, front lining units before you can attack them. And that kind of slowed things down, kept things a little less aggressive. Uh, and I thought that was, you know, interesting at least. My biggest issue though with the game. Uh, at first, just kind of at glance value, is just the execution of the game itself. And normally, I'm not the most off-put by a lack of polish, but in a crowded market like the digital card game genre, uh, you really need to have your game super polished up. And just, you know, the graphics in this game kind of look a little rough and uninspired, and just everything you do in this game, it just feels so slow and tedious, and nothing ever really feels impactful. And maybe it's because I'm spoiled with games like like Legends of Runeterra, that's what I've been playing recently, uh, but it just, it makes this game seem just so much less impactful. Uh, my second and still just as big issue with the game is actually with the 2v2 game mode in itself. So it's pretty much just like you're playing 1v1 except with another player on your team. And I know that sounds obvious, but uh, for some reason you can control your teammates' cards and creatures. So if they play a creature, you could just immediately kill it by attacking a bigger creature uh, because there's also not summoning sickness in this game. Uh, and so also, like, there was a time where I was wanting to do this kind of little combo that, you know, was doing two cards. Uh, and I played the first card and then he just immediately uh, like attacked someone that was I was gonna kill uh, and sacrificed his you know nice big creature for it and there's just there's not really a great way to communicate with the other person uh, unless you're like in a discord call with them and you know I mean obviously like yeah a lot of these people that are playing these games might be in a discord call or playing with a friend but for the casual player base that is just wanting to play the game 2v2 is like I mean extremely frustrating because there's just no way to communicate what you're wanting to do or what you could do, um, and it's just frustrating. And I really like the concept of the 2v2, and I actually kind of like some of the ways they do it, um, like kind of having, you know, sharing your side of the board and their side of the board, uh, and choosing who you attack. It just, it needs a lot more work, especially in the kind of communication aspect, and, you know, I don't think you should be able to control the enemy's car or your teammate's cards, um, because it just, it's just frustrating. Uh, another issue with the game is it's just kind of the curse of being an indie game uh, or an indie card game, but it's the queue times. And it was taking me so long to even find 2v2 matches that sometimes I was just, I mean, it would take so long, I was just playing with bots because I, I didn't want to just sit there waiting in a queue that I didn't know would actually, you know, happen. And there'd be times where there were three of us waiting for a fourth and the fourth would just never come. 
And the problem with playing with bots is this game, the AI in the game is just so dumb. Uh, I mean, they were, as an example, when I was kind of starting out playing, uh, they were just doing things like where they would just keep hitting face, even though they started with less health than me. And if I just kept hitting face, I would obviously beat them. And just, you know, I haven't experienced a ton of the AI in the game, um, but, you know, the AI experienced was very, very dumb. Uh, another problem with the game is a lot of the cards are really, really basic, and it just seems like every other card game. You know, you have cre you know cards that are like give a creature plus three plus three, or just deal some direct damage, or just heal a certain amount. And I mean, the, the keywords on the creatures as well are fairly basic, and it's like if you just compare it to something like Legends of Runeterra, where you have cards that inspire decks of putting poison mushrooms in the enemy deck, or just a single card that if it kills a certain amount of units you just instantly win the game or cards that you know destroy your own deck so they can get more powerful near the end of the game I mean there's all of these interesting mechanics and I haven't seen any interesting mechanics of the cards themselves uh, that really just did not feel bland to me and I mean I think that's a good way to describe this game unfortunately um, you know it, it's just it kind of feels bland and it does pain me because this game has a ton of really interesting mechanics and features that I would love to see in other card games I love the 2v2 aspect in this game and I would die to have that in like any other card game so I think it's really really cool that you know that's in this I really love the seasonal aspect of the game where the entire card set changes each season because that one prevents things from getting stale and two prevents the game from getting super pay to win because if you play four seasons after the game already came out in a game like Hearthstone or expansions that's a lot of catching up to do uh, across a bunch of different expansions. Uh, I love the battle pass and the customization in this game. I mean, you can customize the card backs and the card frames and like the card little pins in the middle, uh, skins and nameplates. I mean, you name it. There's so much customization. Uh, the problem is, is I can't really be bothered to play this game for a long period of time. And uh, there's another, just one kind of last mechanic I want to talk about where there are hero powers for each of the different classes because there's different classes in the game. Um, and that kind of, you know, determines your hero power and what type of cards you're going to be wanting to use. But so the hero power is that you can use, if you play five cards of your color, uh, you actually level up your hero power. And there's like four or five different levels uh, for each person. And I think that's a really cool concept. But I mean... It's just, it's disappointing because I went into it just wanting to experience these things. And that, you know, the game's free to play. So I would definitely recommend if you want to try out, you know, the 2v2 aspect for yourself or you want to try the, you know, just game in itself, you can definitely do that. It is free. Uh, you do unlock like more than half of the set after just playing the tutorial. Um, and you unlock, from what I've heard, you can unlock like all the cards in three days after playing. So it's really easy to get all of the cards, um, which would be, you know, pretty awesome to experience experience it. Uh, it just, it's kind of a bland type of game. And that is why for me, I am not going to be playing it uh, very much more. And I don't see it having that long of a lifespan just with how indie card games go. But uh, if you have played this game or just from, you know, watching gameplay, I would love to know your guys' opinions on it. You know, I know a lot of people do like this game. So if you're one of them, you know, let me know in the comments down below uh, why you actually like it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more content. New reviews come out about twice a week just on a wide variety of games. Uh, and if you have any recommendations, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys are having a great day today, I hope you continue having a great day. If you guys aren't having a great day, I hope you guys start having a great day. But either way, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. See you guys next time.